CEO shares all about their, you know, the, their KPIs. I know, and but it's also, their business. And it's then also, I wanna, and then I want to ask them, I do raise my hand, ask, how's your love life? I also know the way the reality TV sausage gets made. So part of me is like, then I'm just not getting the real version. I figure I have access to you in real life. I can just ask you. True. Or have you on this podcast. So anyway, so oh, the second part to that Bridges story, by the way. So that gets, uh, we start dating, we're over that. And then about a month later, she's like, hey, you, uh, would you be interested if Bridget wanted to like sleep over with us? And faked like she was really excited about the prospect of it. Faked? No, she was like, you know, it would be fun. Like if Bridget, she wanted me to be like, yeah, that would be great. It was another like tricky test. And I'm too wily. I wasn't falling for this. I was like, no, why would I want that? That's weird. You know, but she was assuming a guy would be like, sure, bring your hot friend into it. So I'm like, that's game playing. And I don't, I don't need, I don't think that's honest. But to, to your point earlier, like there becomes a point in a relationship where it's just the two of you. You might not be engaged, but you're at least committed to the point where you're, there's no nonsense. We're, we're moving towards something together. We're growing together every single day. Yeah. Or are you like me and think there should be another title short of fiance that signifies that this relationship is more than just boyfriend, girlfriend. There should be another category down that it's like, she's not just another one of my girlfriends. And I, that's more than just one of my 50 boyfriends. I don't know. I don't want to add more labels into the process. Well, but I, it's about, I know I agree. I hate the labels too, but people want to know, like it's about saying who this person is in my life both to that person and to the world. I think that kind of matters. Yeah. And, and I, I look at that process is that you're practicing for marriage. That's what I want to do on practice. I want to start to, you know, at this stage of my life, I look at people like, how can we merge our lives together? You know, I, I have, I'm a, I'm a grown up at 40 years old, pretty much. I don't have children, right? Um, but I have been quote unquote, locationally independent living in Maryland, Los Angeles, New York. We're here in Boca. Yeah. Um, so I, those conversations throughout the, I, what I like to call them, we're practicing relationship or practicing being married. We're seeing how compatible we are and how well we do together. Um, and also I say practicing relationship, but practicing love. I want to, I've right, but practicing or experiencing? Experiencing, sure. But can't you be, isn't there a point where you're like, okay, take my hand and we're going to just dive into this and move forward together as long as we can go yeah. without a label? Isn't that the point that you are sort of committed or is it the I, the muttering yeah. of I love you? Yeah, well, uh, I mean, I love you is sort of the you know, it's the icing on the cake. It's, you know, starting with respect and honesty and integrity and um, lifestyle. And then you get to love and you're like, great. With this- And how do you define love? We've had this conversation on your podcast. How do you define it? Um, the love, Have you defined it? Yeah, the love I like to play is a love of ever increasing acts of sharing and mm -hmm. ego elimination. So I'm constantly sh sharing more with you and giving more to- to be with you yeah. at the same time that I'm removing my mask and the layers that I've built up and the walls that I've built up to get closer to you. Elimination of ego is a underrated um, fundamental element of a healthy relationship. You're right. I think that's good. Thanks. And taking off I like the mask. You, I like when you say that I'm right. You are right. That's a good one. We don't talk about that a lot, but, and because people don't think ego is a, I did a whole podcast about a month and a half ago about pride. You know, and there are certain words that are triggers like they're negatives, but ego, having ego is, we all have it in some way. And being able to say, I have it, but either we're going to reshape it or table it in circum circumstances, that means that you care enough about both this person and our relationship to go to that place that is not necessarily the most comfortable for us. That's a good thing. Yeah. Did you have to put your ego aside to risk? getting hurt on this show or getting embarrassed on this show? Because when you tape a reality show, you have no idea what the outcome is going to be. Were you most worried about getting hurt or were you more worried about, I'm going to look bad? Because both of those are ego adjacent. Yeah. You know, well, first of doing the show, it was, it was May of 2021 that we recorded. And this is like, you know, Hollywood is just opening back up and, COVID protocols are really high. 
what the show didn't do that I would have loved is like if, you know, I first met Andy Cohen as I walked on set as opposed to him coming into my green room ahead of time. Oh, that didn't happen? No, that didn't happen. So I wasn't warmed up to him as a person. Right. Um, And either with the the sex expert that they brought on the show. So there there was no rapport that was built. Um, And so on the show, for, for me, what I kept having to tell myself was that this show is about you receiving feedback, um, not... um, not diving into the men because I kind I kind of want to give the, the, <laughs> the men feedback right. uh, on the show. You know, Christina's perfect. They're right. We need to to work on them. Kidding, uh, kind of. <laughs> You're a model. You're a child model. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, what's the answer? So you were worried about I was, how, how so you I, were perceived. I was, I was worried about. Um, I was just discerning because. I guess I was kind of a little bit more of thoughtful of how these men were being portrayed. I was... You didn't want them to get mad at you for an experience that was mostly about you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like I'm I'm being, I'm, I'm, they're being so generous of saying yes to come and do the show, which is sort of about me. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, oftentimes people, uh, uh, all my friends who watch the show at the end, they're they say to me, how did you get these men to say yes to do this? Like, right. Um, so I was, and, and, and also too, it's, it's, it's like, I don't know what questions they're coming out and asking me what I, Andy Cohen, I watched him and he would say something and be like, record again, take this cut again. And, and at the end of it, I was like, damn, I wish I did that. <laughs> like, I didn't realize <laughs> that I could be like, wait, no, I want to say this this time. Um, so there was, there was a lot more that I want to say. I felt like when I rewatched the show that I am more witty than I came across. Um, all, and, and my friends who watched the show, they said, wow, you are so authentically you. Like it was like, I was watching you. There was no performance. It was just Christina. Right. Um, in a red dress. And they all, they, they, they would, they love the guys. Um, a lot of them want me to be back with the second one. They're like, why'd you break up with him? So all, everybody was painted in a nice way good good for andy cohen yeah good good for andy cohen Although, did you watch the other one the other one? of course i watched mine first and it's an album you know yeah. you have to watch the whole album you're one song in an album so i watched the others and and my episode which is titled uh the relationship guru can't find love of course <laughs> of course <laughs> um and um but it it is uniquely different from all of the other episodes i yeah it's it's very different if you watch the all the episodes and do they offer while. alcohol like they do on the bachelor where they're like there's an open bar if you need a drink before you go on or no it wasn't like that no no uh, alcohol no oh, good did you want alcohol no were you nervous how um, much tv have you done that was that was my first real real tv but was your first time getting mic'd up a first like that. Having a mic cord up your red dress? Yeah, with Andy Cohen uh, yeah. asking me about my love life. Yes, that was that was a, <laughs> that was a first. Um, yeah, did that, you peek at the monitor to see how you looked? Yeah, it just it it kind of it just all happened. It's like a blur. Yeah, it was all a blur. Happened really quickly. Oh, what I do remember when the producers as we were walking out, you know, as he's walking me out into the studio, and it was also the first time walking into a studio that there was like fifty people working. Yeah. And so as we're walking out, he says, um, just don't be nervous. Um, you know, as long as you're confident, be confident. And it, the show will work out really well if you just be confident. And after when I, I, I spoke to him after the show, I said, mm-hmm. that's not a good thing to tell somebody because I was totally confident until you told me that there was a chance <laughs> that I might not be confident. Oh, it hadn't entered your mind that you wouldn't be confident. Yeah, yeah. Uh, See, the lucky thing about that, you shot that in May 2020. 2021. 2021. Yeah. So LA had already gone through their tough time of, of COVID. Mm, LA was in their tough time. It was in their tough time. Yeah. And they still shot that. Yeah. They still shot that. And of course I had the men who all brought controversy in the back scene. One of, in, in, in not in, uh, brought controversy onto this set. One of the men refused to wear a mask and said that he um, doesn't believe in bullshit. And uh, well, didn't you, we well, had to take the mask off when they said action. 
Yeah, they had to take the mask off, but he refused to put a mask on the whole entire time. They tried to give him a shield. He said, no, I don't want a shield. Oh, and Jesus. and he was playing a game because he knew at the time that they needed him. Yeah. So they, they worked with it. Props to him. And then one of the other men, after he came off the, yeah. the, the set, saw he wasn't wearing his mask and was like, what's up? And took off his mask. Uh, no comment on any of this. Um, big picture. How, uh, as we record this, not that we aren't trying to be evergreen here in the podcasting world, but we're, we're winding up 2021. Uh, thoughts, hopes, analysis of where you think we're headed societally or uh, Love World 2022 and beyond? Do you think we're, gonna, we're in a good place? Yeah, I think I like to, to I'm, an, I'm an optimist. You know, I, I, I'm hopeful. Um, I'm also aware that there is a hunger to engage again. There is a hunger to engage. There's an openness to engage. The, the best thing, uh, I think I said this on, a, on an earlier podcast, the best thing that came out of this was if you went back and you were around 2017, 2018, there was a lot of people that were like, you know what, fuck it. I'd rather stay home and I'll just drink wine and watch Netflix and I'll be happier by myself out of work and whatever. People got to experience that in real life, in real time, and they don't like it. No, they and miss each other. And we do miss each other. People like touch and connecting and flirting and hugging and all of the PG-13 elements of, of physical bonding, just sharing space, which is a big part of what you do, it does matter. Yeah, you're reminding me why my business is going to take back off in 2022. Right. So you hit pause. It didn't end. I hit pause. It didn't end. And during that period of time, I got to go home and reconnect with my family um, and dive more deeply deeply into my own existence and understand myself as a human being. So not only did I get to go revisit all my ex relationships, I got to visit my family. So you're now a better, uh, better candidate for love than you were before. I'm so ready. Oh, see? So ready. We are selling hope here. All right. Uh, do your infomercial. My infomercial. Yeah. Tell, Tell the world what you're, what you're doing and how they can connect with you. Well, everybody should go to we deepen.com. Click on the calendar. You'll see all types of, transformational growth oriented experiences that can help you have healthy, more meaningful, loving relationship. There are experiences there that are for if you're single and you want to go out and meet somebody like a Tantra speed date or a hum hum dating experience. And also experiences if you're coupled up and you want to go deeper with your significant other, you know, once there was only um, therapy or sex parties are offered for couples and there's so much more that you can do and deepen through Tantra workshops and such. And then lastly, um, other experiences that help you activate into your fullest potential. You know, we saw the big rise of Tony Robbins and now there are so many experiences like we're putting events up there that are like a personal development course meets a party. Um, so go check it out. Visit WeDeepen.com. We'd love to have you. Love to have you share. Also, I host a podcast, Deepen with Christina, um, where I get to talk to all the leaders of the quote unquote transformational movement. And these are the most interesting people because they're so real. They tell you about their love lives and all the shit that they're navigating, working through while they're leading. Um, So check out that podcast, Deepen with Christina, and you can find all this at WeDeepen.com. Good. It was good to see you again. It was good to have you back in. I give Christina a hard time. Sometimes I say she's out on the the kooky fringes, but there is nobody that I have met or have had on this show or have shared with you guys that is more passionate about passion and love and connecting and just trying to be better um, people than Christina Weber. Mm. So I'm Thanks, glad you're Harry. part of our uh, great love world here. Uh, as far as us, as always, like, share, follow, and please review not just deep in with Christina, but please review um, the Great Love Debate. Go to greatlovedebate.com. We may or may not have some shows coming up in the new year. I'm getting the itch. I thought I was satisfied. I'm like, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm getting the itch. I want to promote it. I know. They're starting to call and the venues are calling, like trying to book. We'll see. Shoot us an email, greatlovedebate at gmail.com if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or hopes for the new year. Um, we have some awesome guests coming up. One actually flaked on me today, but she's still awesome. So I won't hold it against her. And we will address her flaking uh, when she actually does the podcast, I think next week. Um, because as always at the great love debate, we never stop making love. See you next time.